Yo, 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 what's up, guys? It is Deltria. We are back with what should finally be the last part of Fire Emblem Fates Conquest. Last time we picked up your girl Soleil, and that is, in fact, how you say her name, as a million and a half people brought up to me. So, thank you. I am now well aware. A true master of French in every sense of the word. <laughs> Speaking of Soleil, though, and my stupid obsession with random trivia apparently there is a there's like a french expression for for big smile which if you remember that's that's pretty close to what the title for Soleil's chapter was right and it's it's i'm probably gonna butcher this so i'm sorry <laughs> for all you native french speakers but en, or en soleil i believe is supposed to be like bright smile essentially or a person who is cheesing basically and I thought that was actually kind of a clever pun I'm not gonna lie I gotta hand it to you fates I approve and also since I saw this one a few times as well yes I am an idiot and I forgot that those soldiers do in fact have wary fighter yeah they're they're fine they're fine so I was probably making a big deal of nothing when I was trying to save them that's on me obviously though this is a grievous mistake very unbecoming of a true master of the craft <laughs> The craft of Fire Emblem, obviously, because that's a legitimate profession. I just have to throw that out there. But of course, all this stuff is sort of ignoring the elephant in the room because I was I was very curious as to what the controversy with Soleil is because I'm sure that many people who have followed Fates a little bit more closely probably saw this come up at least once or twice. And quite a few of you guys had some explanations for that. I'll probably pick two for this one because th there's there's a lot of different factors going on with this from what I understand. So BNB says the Soleil controversy essentially exists over two separate issues. To give the relevant background, Soleil's character cliche in the JP version is what has been referred to as the schoolgirl lesbian, which I didn't I didn't even know that was a thing, first of all. But apparently it's referring to some sort of anime trope where a girl is straight but it's 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 sort of like a phase and yeah right off the bat I can see where that would be this sort of insensitive in a lot of ways or not necessarily I I'm not really that familiar with Japanese culture I know a little bit but not nearly enough to really weigh in on this in a meaningful way my guess would be that they probably didn't mean for it to come off in that sort of way to say like oh uh, your sexuality is a phase or whatever but he goes on to say that he can see where the localization team for this game would have thought that it was a little bit insensitive because again it almost sort of seems to imply that your sexual orientation could be a phase and because of that treehouse decided to change soleil into what she is today where she's she's very clearly into girls. I know Laszlo said that she's probably bi, but it we didn't really see a whole lot of that. It'd be kind of hard to tell that at a glance, if not for the fact that Laszlo came out and straight up said, no, she likes both. You know what I mean? But then he goes on to bring up some of the issues that this causes in terms of the storyline and the writing and all of that. Where he says, this change caused a lot of problems in other areas. In the Japanese version, all of Soleil's S supports were romantic in nature, but in the North American release, they're all sort of these best friend type conversations. And apparently she even outright rejects all the guys, except for Forrest, which is just, that's a can of words I'm not really into. No, 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 no. We're already walking the line, man. I don't... <laughs> one step at a time. One step at a time here. But basically, because it's really obvious that she's into girls... And also, in combination with the fact that there's not really a whole lot of S-supports, uh, same-sex S-supports in the game to begin with, people were understandably a little bit upset that Soleil is completely changed, seemingly, to be unavailable. So people felt like they were unrepresented, and as such, they felt like Soleil was handled very poorly. Because it was ju it was just the obvious choice, right? To just have her be one of the gay options. And I, I can understand that. I can definitely understand that. Especially if your only choice was, like, Rajat, right? I, ooh, don't even get me started on Tharya. 
Don't even get me started on Daria, man. There's going to be plenty of time for that. But I will say that I will never understand the obsession with her. I mean, I do understand the obsession with her. But it was also another aspect to Soleil. Uh, so, Seti the Wind Sage, great taste by the way, says, Deltre, to give a brief version of the Soleil controversy in the Japanese version of Soleil's B support with the male avatar. To explain the C support, she asks Korn to help her feel more comfortable with girls as she's nervous around them. In the B support, Korn finds, uh, I believe it's a potion, and slips it into Soleil's drink. The potion made Korn look like a girl. The idea was for Soleil to talk to him looking like a girl to help her out. The controversy is that Korn is drugging her without consent, and that she has an S support with Korn that people see as some sort of gay conversion therapy. Oh my lord. <laughs> wow. Wow. The western version of the game swaps the Korn slipping a potion into her drink with Soleil putting on a blindfold and Korn asking Soleil to imagine she's a girl. The support basically goes the same after the fact. While I personally never thought the controversy was so bad, I think the localization was clever. Hopefully the explanation was helpful and made sense. Keep up the good work, Deltray. Thank you. Definitely very helpful. Made perfect sense to me. And... Uh, yeah, again, I, I definitely think that the localization team went about this the better way. And this is a case where I I am 99% confident that they were not implying any sort of, like, date druggy sort of thing with this. This genuinely, to me, seems like a cultural difference. Because this sort of date drugging thing is more of a Western phenomenon from everything that I understand. It, it certainly sees a lot more spotlight in the Western world as opposed to anywhere else. Rightfully so, it's truly heinous. I, I think that goes without saying. I, I shouldn't have to stand up and say that, but in case there's any confusion, no, I'm not saying that somehow, because I don't necessarily think that this whole controversy was intended to be bad, it doesn't still have some implications. I understand that there are some implications, but I really do not believe that this was an intentional slight on the developer's part. There is very little chance. I still do agree with their decision to change it, however, because, let's be honest, it's a very sensitive topic for for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons, and rightly so. And I think that the decision to outright sidestep these issues by preserving the meaning, because the meaning is pretty clear. Korn is trying to do Soleil a solid. Korn is trying to help her out in overcoming a fear. And in fairness, I don't know what the Japanese version said, but this version of the game very very explicitly said she is bi, so it's not really as if she converted Soleil, or it's not as if Korin somehow converted Soleil to anything else, but at the end of the day, that doesn't really change how this might look, and I, I definitely think that they made the right call with this one, no doubt in my mind. You know, I always say that it's, it's important for localizers to consider the audience that they are trying to capture with the new localization, right? It's important that you can take a product from one culture, translate it, and have it make sense to another culture. From an American perspective, it really it doesn't, like, I know I keep saying that, but it really it doesn't look good. The original conversation really just doesn't look good. And yes, I'm fully aware that even in the conversation itself, Korin's intentions were obviously good. Obviously. Korin is trying to help Soleil overcome a fear. A fear that could be potentially holding her back from really expressing herself. But man, that's, <laughs> that's just one of those cultural differences that almost makes you stop and say, man, what were they thinking? You know what I mean? So I, I understand it. I, I understand it. Thank you guys for explaining. And finally, I feel the need to justify this a little bit for some reason. Uh, Mario says that intro hurts physically. You know what, man? You know what, man? Because I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> a terrible Frozen joke. So here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. And hear me out on this because I can back this up. So Elsa is more interesting than any character in Fire Emblem Fates. Yeah, I said it. There's my hot take for the day. Here's why. <laughs> At least in terms of Kingdom Hearts. I have not seen the movie. I don't really intend on seeing the movie. I actually have a running joke with one of my friends because she was like super obsessed about this movie when it came out. So I just, <laughs> you know, forget it. Anyways, the first thing she tries to do is kill you when you play Kingdom Hearts. That's the first thing she tries to do. She tries to kill you. She tries to kill your party. Compare that to any character from Fates. I I'll sit here and wait. 
I'll see you in wave. What has any character in Fates done that's more interesting than that? Aren't you a little bit interested now? Don't you want to see what kind of cool ice power she might have when she finally turns around to the side of good and joins your party? Yeah, so did I when I played the game for the first time until I realized that that wasn't going to happen. But, she definitely made a strong enough first impression on me. I'll say that. And of course, like I said, I did have a friend who was like super into it back when it was new. And she wanted to show me the movie so bad. And I, I remember going over to her place, and she's trying to get me to watch this movie. And of course, I'm not going to do that. No, we're men out here. I put my foot down on that subject immediately. So I don't want to hear anybody say, I don't want to hear anybody say that I'm going soft. Okay. Because first of all, you can watch Disney as long as at least one person is into it. That's just kind of the rule with Disney, okay? If nobody is into it, then it's weird. It's just weird. But if there's at least one person who's way into it, it's fine. That's rule number one. But regardless of that, I put my foot down. And I said, no, we're not watching that sissy stuff. We're going to watch something manly or I'm out of here. So we watched Tangled instead. So I don't want to hear anybody say... <laughs> Oh, what am I doing? Anyways, today, Nina, let's do it. It's the last one, guys. I can't believe we're here. Paralog 22, Abrupt Clash. The group defends an important treasure from a group of bandits. Nina takes charge of the defense plan, but is shocked to learn that her... Oh, Niall... <laughs> my bad. Niles takes charge of the defense plan, but is shocked to learn that his daughter, Nina, is in the group. For Chapter 22, uh, Abrupt Clash. So just because I know some people are going to be asking, no, this doesn't mean that I'm never doing the Fates DLC. I really don't think that continuing on with Fates right now is something that I really want to do personally. I am, I'm getting to about my lyrics with this game. I don't know. I don't want it to become a situation where I'm just phoning it in or anything like that. I think that I would do much better and I think you guys would enjoy it much better if I came back to the DLC with a fresh set of eyes when I'm more when I'm more refreshed on the whole experience when I'm more when I'm more excited to do it basically honestly I don't want it to be one of those situations where I'm just phoning it in because some people wanted to see it sorry that's not that's not really how I like to do things and I'm sure you guys would watch it and would support it but I just don't think that the timing is right right now Hmm, yes, you will do nicely, if you're willing to help. A band of thieves has been prowling around my manor lately. They've heard that I'm storing some precious Norian objects here. I consider myself quite a collector of cultural items, so you must understand. I'm losing sleep worrying about these thieves breaking in to steal them. I doubt this matters much to great heroes like you, but to preserve Nor's culture. Would you help? Absolutely. Absolutely. For Nor, anything. And we happen to have our best expert on thievery right here. Oh. oh, who? Little old me. Sure, I know a thing or two about manners and how to crack them. I know how I'd break it, so I'm already ten steps ahead of them. Ah, oh. oh, thank you. I place my trust in you then. <laughs> the pleasure is mine. Believe me. The pleasure is always mine. Ooh. <laughs> when I catch petty crooks in the act, they never fail to soil their breeches. Is that what you're into, Niles? Oh, my lord. <laughs> this guy gets weirder and weirder by the second, man. It's always good fun to see fools brought low. Now, see that? All right. Yeah, I can I can get behind that one, Niles. Right. Oh, God. I just said I can get behind that. You know what? We're done here. All right. We're ready, Silas. Those fools won't even know what hit them. They're outside in the shadows, and they'll be inside soon. Off with you, or else you'll scare these jokers away. I have faith in you. I have faith in you, Niles. Now be careful. <laughs> oh, sweet faith. Best I not rely on that. I'm better under cover of darkness. Now, when will they... Ah. That didn't take very long. Uh. <laughs> the Queen of Yowie herself. Oof. <laughs> you can't hide from me. Come out, come out, whoever you are. You call yourself a thief, blundering around in here like that. You're a disgrace to your profession. Come on, show your face. Well, N Nina, what are you doing here? Huh? Huh, father? Hey. Hey, you should be in your deep room where I put you. Hmm. <laughs> God damn. So this girl is, she's crazy. Oh yeah, she is crazy with a capital C. But I'll be honest, I think it's funny. 
Because she's like, did she? Well, let's keep going. But I, I do think your gimmick is funny. I think that it also gets old. Oh yeah, definitely gets old. But goddamn, if I didn't have a good laugh about this the first time I saw Nina. You didn't even notice that I broke out of there a ways back. I had to pursue my true calling, that of chivalrous thievery. Huh? Huh? Chivalrous thievery. That's right. That's right. Must I explain it to you? I steal from the rich. I give to the poor. The creep who owns this manor is one of the richest, so here I am. You wouldn't believe how he's gotten his hoard of treasures. Not that you'd care. Wait! Wait, none of that matters. What's the one thing I've told you again and again? No stealing. And all of your jabber about rich and poor doesn't matter. You're wrong. You're wrong. It's justified. Not that I have to justify myself to you. Now, let go of me, father. No. No. I'm here to round up a bunch of filthy thieves, daughter. No, you have me mistaken. That's Keaton's kid. Oh, my mistake. Hmm. hmm. Fine words from one of the filthiest of them. Ugh. How dare you, Nina. Now, come with me. Back off! Back off! I'm not going anywhere with you. I'm on the side of right. Out of my way. But you're on my left. No! Ugh. <laughs> you strike your father. Apologize now. That might make things right between us. Though I'm still going to make sure you're punished. You can't make me. I don't like when Niles says he's going to punish people because I can only imagine what's going through this guy's mind. The implications of this are dire. <laughs> you can't make me. And you can't catch me. Well, not me personally, but... Looky what we have here. Room's just full of goods to liberate. My friends, burgle quickly. They're on to us. Just grab and go. Nina. Nina, stop. You've deluded yourself that you're on the side of right. I've dreamed about this. I've dreamed about this, father. Draining the coffers of the wealthy. Vindicating the poor. We're getting what we need, and then getting out. I leave you to your disgrace. What do you do these days anyways? Pfft, don't answer. I don't care. Goodbye, father. See you in three turns. Okay, so. This map. Little tricky, little tricky. So, it's another Rob map. But. I don't necessarily think it's a bad map by any stretch of the imagination. I'm really hoping that the reinforcements aren't quite as bad as they were on the last map. I get what they were going for on Soleil's map, right? But the way that it was handled sort of leads itself to that awkward situation where... You're sort of likely to be wrapping up by the time the reinforcements start showing up. And that means you gotta go back to the other side of the map where you just came from. And then once you get over there, reinforcements show up on the other side of the map where you were previously. And it's just like, oh man. But it, it is to me, at the very least, kind of annoying when the game forces you to go to some area that has no importance just because they decided to put some reinforcements there five, six, seven turns into the map without you having any way to predict that. Now, if there were enemies down here already, like if there were a group of soldiers of some kind down here, then that'd be one thing because I'd have to come over here anyways. But I, you get my point, I'm sure. Anyways, as you would expect, lots of adventurers. Not really sure why there'd be generals here. I thought you guys were thieves. What's going on with that? Could you imagine trying to break into a place in a full suit of armor like this? <laughs> I don't think that'd go very well, man. I think I mentioned this before, back in Percy's map, but the first time I played this game, I thought for sure I messed up by defeating Nina. You're supposed to beat her. You're supposed to actually defeat her. I thought you were supposed to, like, route everything else, and then maybe talk to her or something like that, which is what I tried to do, but I... It's really unclear, which we'll see in a second, but at any rate. She's not really too much to worry about. It's mostly the rest of these guys... Anyways, I think we're going to go ahead and give this a go right here. Don't let Nina escape from the manor, or else you'll fail the mission. Route the enemy before Nina escapes. So there's misleading statement number one. It seems like you're not supposed to kill Nina based on that, does it not? But no, you you actually have to kill her. Uh, I'm going to turn the animations off for the first turn or so, because I there's going to be a lot of enemy phase, man. Now, I did bring Forrest, and I gave him lock touch back. Because it's just going to be that much more useful here than anything else you can do. And I, I, I do want another thief of some kind. And it was him or the slow one. I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest with ourselves here. No need to play games with this. I think we know who the better choice is. I do want to leave the animations off, though, for the first round. Because, again, lots of enemy face. Lots and lots of enemy face. And I already know that uploads over the weekend have been a little bit sparse. I've been... I've just been so busy, guys. Oh, I... No, 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 no. I did this correctly. I thought for some reason that uh, dude was paired up with Elise. 
We're gonna move Ophelia right there and drop Elise off behind here so that we get the uh, Lily's boys. But but basically, I've just been helping my family move. Well, not move necessarily. We're, we're selling a house. We're selling my grandmother's house. Uh, she passed away quite some time ago, so like, you don't have to give your condolences or anything. I've had plenty of time to come to terms with it and all. But we're 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 getting ready to sell the house, right? And that means getting everything out of it, essentially. And well, when you when you've lived in one place for 50 years, I mean that's a lot of stuff. That is a lot of stuff. I was pulling out stuff that I don't think I've ever seen before. You know what I mean? Like. 50 years worth of gifts, 50 years worth of birthday presents, Christmas presents, not to mention anything else that she might have had, and to be honest, we we were kind of slow in doing it. Okay, it's just Mozo. I actually want to leave her right there. We were kind of slow in doing it, not necessarily in how much work we were doing, but just in the time we've had versus, uh, versus how much work we need to do to get this place ready to be sold because they're closing it on Friday, right? So we need everything done by then. Uh, th this coming Friday, that is. And we, we hadn't put in a lot of work into it before this point. I, I get it, you know, because it was hard enough for me, right? And she was my grandmother. And like I said, I've had time to come to terms with it and everything. But it's been mostly my mother and my aunt as well as myself and my sister doing basically everything over there. Um, my mother's brother as well. And when it comes to them, when it comes to my mother, her relatives, etc., we're talking about their mother, obviously. So I understand why they might not be so keen to just rush through this. But regardless, that does mean that we had to get a whole lot of stuff done in not a whole lot of time. So I, I was just really, really exhausted over the weekend because of that. And I unfortunately wasn't able to get out as much as I would have liked to to you guys. Uh, so in the interest of making damn sure that this goes up sooner rather than later, we're just going to let the animations stay off for a little bit. We can turn them back on, I guess, after this turn or so. We're going to have Ophelia kill that adventure, though, because, again, she's just about the best person to do that. Why didn't I use the gate there, I wonder? Am I new? I must be. Uh, and like I say, Ophelia is probably our best bet at taking out these adventurers. So what we want to do is throw her into range of them as much as possible. I want to stay out of range of this knight, though, because he will probably mess her up like nothing else. So right about there should be good for Ophelia. Life Taker's keeping her plenty healthy. I think she got some dodges, but she was going to end up killing one of the adventurers anyways, and there was no way that... Uh, there was no way that she would end up too low to do this basically Because she's only drawing in two adventurers. She would take one hit for sure, and then she would block the second So no matter what kind of outcome it happened there. She would always be good uh, Camilla, how did you do here? She did pretty okay We could have slowly smash this armor now and since he has a spear. There's no way that he somehow Deals any damage not to mention the fact that Camilla could just outright KO him from where he was at after Soleil hit him only a single time. No speed, of course, but we knew that. We already knew Soleil would never get a point of speed again. I assume. <laughs> also, one of you guys did say that aptitude actually re-rolls your stat gross, which was pretty interesting to me. I didn't realize that's how it worked. So it's similar to reclassing in that sense. Which I guess... I guess maybe that's why it's not so accessible, right? Beyond the fact that, of course, it's supposed to be like a... Like a special thing that makes Mozu stand out, right? It's supposed to be a Mozu's draw, in a sense. Like I say, we can turn these back on. But I had no idea that you could actually reroll your girls. So I'm guessing that... Oh, I should have dropped Mozu. Well, that's fine, I think. I hope. I'm guessing, though, that you can, like... For example, you could re-equip and unequip aptitude to try and rig level ups that way but you would only really ever be able to do that for one or two characters per playthrough unless you're a dirty cheater and you hack all your characters to have aptitude anyways you can get banned for that I'll have you know <laughs> but that was an interesting little bit of trivia I didn't really realize that 
Now with these generals, though, I'm thinking that we should be okay. A lot of them have wary fighters. Some of them didn't, as we saw. But it's pretty safe to assume at this point that if you see a general, they're going to have wary fighters. Not that that's going to save them from the wrath of Camilla. I think we already knew that. No real need to spend any time on that statement. Ah, she's doing her best. She's doing her best. My passion burns bright. It's never going to get old to me that somehow the shield gauge allows flyers to block arrows with absolutely no penalty. I don't know, man. It just doesn't seem quite right to me somehow. You mean to tell me if you can deflect arrows some of the time? Glad that's over with. That you're somehow incapable of doing it all the time? Or like, I, I don't understand. What I do understand is that we're going to blow through the rest of these guys without too much of an issue here. I want to have Forrest rush forward as much as possible. There are some staircases on the sides of the hallways, and I would assume that if there were going to be reinforcements, that's where they would come from. I think I can at least get somebody over to block the staircase on the left. And I know that... I know that I saw that reinforcements do show up sooner or later. I wasn't really clear as to where. Hold on. Hammer, hand axe, okay. Yeah, there we go. We take this guy out with Sole. Really easily, in fact. You need a spanking, she says. She's been hanging out with Niles a little bit too much, I think. But at any rate, we take that guy without too much of an issue. Now Camilla can push forward. She does have a shield gauge, actually, so I have no fear in moving her all the way in. Yeah, actually, I don't want to do that. I'll preserve her gauge a little bit. Seems to be a little bit smarter. Now, these adventurers that have lock touch are not going to be aggressive towards you. They're just going to gun for the treasures immediately. So we don't really have to consider too much with them. It is fortunate that... <laughs> that uh, I ended up creating one of those guys though because that would have just slowed me down if I did. I should have dropped off Mozu because I wanted to use two people to dual attack here, right? I could have used Percy to throw this hand X, moved Leo, had him kill something else, and then had Mozu trade Percy over to a hammer and then dual attack the other general who would have ended up right here. He would have ended up right there if not for the fact that Leo had killed the first guy. And that's what I wanted to do, but I I goofed. I tweaked. Uh, we're going to switch back to the horse spirit at this point because there's also a berserker that we could be fighting. I'm really, I'm really not with it, huh? Because I could have had Percy over on this side. We could have then been paired with Niles, danced for by Azura, and then killed this general. But now if I go in, it's sort of a risk. Well, I can still do that, though, can't I? Yeah, I can still do that just fine. I just do it like this instead. Yeah. And then I just go in first with Percy, have him use the hammer, and this also gives Leo Light Taker. So this is the best possible way. And they will not go for Percy because he has a million defense. They'll be doing way more to Leo. So he's going to be the target of choice, without a doubt. Okay, phew, we saved it. We saved it. I am going to use the Horse Spirit, though, again, because that Berserker there. And with the Horse Spirit, I will be able to double him and take him out in a single round. And even if I've done my math incorrectly, now it no longer matters because Leo is back to full. God, I love Life Taker. And what's crazy is I didn't even really buff him up with defense or anything. I went with speed and defense in the mess hall. I believe I said that, but if I didn't, I went with speed and defense because there's lots of enemy phasing to do here. And I just want to take less damage in general, you feel me? So, it, it helps with that. Because when you're taking four attacks, let's say, well, then you've taken eight less damage from the mess hall alone, if that makes sense. So it, it adds up very quickly. It adds up very quickly. And also it helps with people like Ophelia, who doesn't have particularly great... Uh, she doesn't have particularly great defense, but her HP is pretty decent, so... It helps her survive for a little bit longer as well. And the speed was necessary so that I could even double these adventures because they are fast. 33 speed is no joke. But Ophelia can do it without a speed pair up, so that's pretty cool. Very useful for sure. Yes, that's right. Bask in her glory. Oh, he's actually going to go for Percy, but it, it doesn't make any difference because both of them were able to one-round this guy. Basically. 
I wonder why Percy. I guess weapon triangle would be the deciding factor there. That'd be my only real guess. Now, Nina, she's already in our range, and she's so weak that honestly anybody that I want could go kill her. Probably just Percy, to be honest. Mm, yeah, I'm thinking that I should be putting somebody more like Camilla on the staircase. And I can put her on the staircase and have her equip a hammer. I think that reinforcements were supposed to show up at like turn 5 or 6. Thankfully, we don't miss the 80. Wouldn't have mattered if we did, though, because we would have had a shield gauge at that point. We would have had the shield gauge at that point. So, we wouldn't have been in danger of death or anything like that. I'll drop off. We'll drop off Soleil. A little bit closer. Now, my mistake here, though, was that Moser should have been unpaired by this point because I could be using her for attack stance and things like that. Yeah, I'm gonna wait for Nina to come back out of that room before we beat her. It's not really a big deal like that, and I do want Leo over here. Oh, well, there you go. I can just have Leo kill this guy with Brynhildr outright, and then he'll still be able to counter kill those two sorcerers over the wall, which is what we want to do. Now, if only that adventurer were aggressive, that would help us out a lot, but he's not, sadly. Actually, attacking with Elise makes more sense. We can take this guy out with her instead, which will give a savage blow on the general, which will let us kill him. Oh, he had counter. I'm so sorry. I'm trash. <sighs> All right, check skills, guys. <laughs> See, I acknowledge that in my head that the other guy did have it, and then I just uh, bleh. trash. So again, if it wasn't apparent why that was my move of choice, it's because of Savage Blow, which would have more easily allowed us to kill this guy. However, this time I just simply have good old Mozu over here in Unpaired, so it's it really doesn't make a difference at this time, basically. Uh, I wish Percy were just a little bit closer, though. I won't lie. Yeah, I won't. That would be so much more useful. Because if I could kill this guy right now, I'd be able to throw Ophelia against the wall and kill these guys, or at least kill some of them. But I guess it doesn't matter too much because I can get Leo back over here on the next turn. And he can just go through the wall and enemy phase these guys to death that way. I can actually kill one of them right now at least. And I probably should. I don't see any reason not to, right? So we kill that guy with Ophelia. Alright, we gotta do this whole song and dance again. Should probably try to kill this guy first, huh? We do, thankfully. Okay, who am I forgetting? Oh, Percy. Yeah, we'll just have Percy kill Nina then. Like so. She has no chance, by the way. Like, look at how dead she is. You fools will never catch me. Never! Let's go. When will they learn? I guess dreams don't come true. And this right here is what messed me up so badly. It plays the you lost a character music. Why? Who thought that this was a good idea? Who approved this? Do you do you even understand how confusing this is after you've been conditioned after an entire 40 hour game to associate this music with a reset? Do you understand how utterly baffling that is to me? I don't think they did that with Percy. I actually think that Nina might be the only one. So, thank you so much for that intelligence systems. Thank you. Could you be any less clear? Had the map been presented as route the enemy, then I don't think that this would be nearly as confusing, but what it says is route the enemy before Nina escapes. God damn it, intelligence system. Whatever. To think that I'd be caught. Or maybe you would think that you have to use the capture command with Niles in order to get her. Like, she'd be the only, uh, the only unique character that can only be captured via Niles, or something like that. I know, I know that you can capture a lot of the generic bosses, but you know what I mean. The only playable character with full supports and all of that good stuff that you would have to capture with Niles in order to recruit. Like, that would almost make more sense than this. And I, I kind of want to say that that's what it should have been, but I guess in the, in the event that you didn't train Niles or whatever... Anyways, these guys are all going to start stealing a bunch of good stuff, like the Shining Bow that you can get for free, uh, a Partner Seal for free, and 3,000 gold. Honestly, that's not nearly as much as it should be for as difficult as it is. 
That's not as much as it should be for as difficult as it is to get that guy, I want to say. But to each their own. You do you, you intelligence system. You do you for sure. At this point, though, we can get Leo all the way over here, like so. And we can tear down this wall. Uh, I'm thinking that reinforcement should be showing up either right now or very soon, so I'm going to throw Camilla onto the staircase. Uh, the alternative here would be throw Soleil on the staircase and then does Forrest live from one of these guys? He has... Honestly, I'll just put I'll put Camilla on the staircase with the hammer. I think that they're going to show up either now or next turn. Won't really make a huge difference because next turn I can just have somebody else block the staircase. Now with this situation... We actually want to switch to Elise. This should just be a one tile choke. So we can do that. Elise is now in the lead, but we can prevent this from being an issue by putting your boy Leo right here. I'm actually going to go ahead. We'll trade this dorky in for a vulnerary, just to be on the safe side. Seems to make some sense to me. Man, if anything, I wish Percy had the dorky, because... Well, I guess there's Niles, yeah. We'll have Niles open the door. Because I, I think that Percy might still be able to do some stuff over on this side. It depends. I, I kind of like to get him over to that staircase, because you never know, man. You never know. This seems like a risk-free move. Yeah. That way, in the off chance that I need more characters available, I will have them. Seems to make some sense to me. Camilla's, of course, really, really broken. So nothing new there. I'm really only concerned with Leo killing these two sorcerers, though, because they are my biggest issue right about now. Rinhild. Yeah, they couldn't have killed no matter what, because as you see, we get a shield gauge right there. And that is how that goes. Not one, but two easy kills. Let's see it. Reinforcements? Reinforcements. Okay, so what do we have? Sorcerers paired up with adventurers. And they have pass. Ooh, nasty, nasty, nasty. So what we want to do with these guys is Ophelia, without a doubt. Because she... She will be able to KO either of these guys. Although, ooh, maybe she won't be able to, though. Because the sorcerers could be giving these guys resistance. Do they? I, I assume that they do. We had a little bit of leeway, but not a whole lot of leeway. So she may actually be unable to kill those guys. Dude can one-shot this guy. Okay, yeah, there we go. There we go. Let's do it. So you die now. Goodbye. I'm sorry. These can come back. These can definitely come back. We'll move Ophelia first. No, we'll move you first. Because, yeah, yeah, this makes more sense. Like I say, dude is so strong, she can just one-shot these clowns, so that's exactly what's going to happen right here. Even if I don't care about the treasure, we still got to kill him. Without a doubt. So we will do exactly that. I did it. We will do exactly that. Savage blow that guy a little bit. Easy kill right here. And then... And then we can just dance for Ophelia. I am going to pair... Uh, I'm going to pair Elise back with her, obviously, because the extra little bit of damage should help. And that honestly may make up for any kind of difference uh, in power here from the adventurers getting a potential res boost. Because we're getting three more magic now. And she can one-round them without Elise's help. And I cannot, for the life of me, predict that... Like, I don't expect them to be giving more than three res, basically. That seems like that would be an awful lot. All we really want to do is make sure that we're not giving them the pillar. And that should be perfectly fine. She's still on 100% help. Uh, Camilla can do as Camilla does. Now, why does this guy survive so much more easily, I wonder? Well, I'll tell you what we can do. We can give this, uh, the Steel Axe Forge back to Camilla. I can throw a Hand Axe to knock out one of these generals. Forrest can knock out the other. That seems to make a lot of sense to me. Right? Because Forrest will also be able to take the staircase. Which is the most important thing about this. If I'm trying to block reinforcements, then let's block us some reinforcements. You know what I mean? Yeah, what am I missing with this guy, I wonder? Why did the last guy take more? I'm sure it's something really obvious. It's just not coming to me, man. It's really just not. But, oh, there it is. There it is. That was bound to happen eventually. 
doesn't really make a huge difference. Forrest, with his fire spell, can knock this guy out. The adventurers are just going to make for the exit points, so I'm not really worried about them picking me off on their way through. They just have standard thief AI, as far as I'm aware. They must, because the first ones did not attack Ophelia. So I can't really see... Can't really see where they would be somehow different in this case. Unless they're just trying to screw me, in which case, by all means. <laughs> by all means, game, do what you gotta do. Oh, this was a mistake. No mistake. <laughs> no mistake. What? <laughs> so obviously, Ophelia should have had a resistance tonic. I think that much we know. That much we know. But she doesn't need it because she's really broken. Yeah. Checks out. <laughs> Why do I do these things to myself? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, I can't really kill this guy right here, though, and you just know more enemies are going to spawn. You just know they will. Which is why I'm going to put Mozu there. Percy right here. Camilla to right here to kill this guy, hopefully, this time. And if not, he's going to get Savage Blow. Yeah, he's, oh, of course. What am I saying? We can just use the Iron Axe now. Or the Bronze Axe, I mean. For a guaranteed kill. Take that shiny bow too, okay. And I just need to put somebody over on the stairs. And that would be essentially a done deal, I want to say. Actually, put Mosley right there. Obviously, we don't want to attack now. But she should be able to reach right here. And then all we got to do is take out that last fool coming right at us. Hopefully. Hopefully. I mean, I could be missing something. There could obviously be other reinforcement points that uh, that I'm not seeing here. Some less obvious ones, but stairs are usually a really safe bet, right? It's over. I think that's just standard Fire Emblem knowledge at this point. You, you see stairs, there's probably enemies coming from there eventually. But that's all I need right now, right? Just like five more guys to show up on both sides of the map. That'd be a lot of fun. That would be a lot of fun. Don't really see how I was supposed to catch this last adventurer, though, on this turn, unless I entrapped him. So I'm hoping that they're not going to punish me for not doing that. That would be just the worst. <laughs> no lie. Cool, so we done. We're done. Can't miss. Good game. And he's even going to bring the treasure to me, which is just about perfect. Good game. And with that, we have also now successfully obtained every last Fates Kid. Oh, we're here, folks. That's it. That is it. We have done it. We have done it. This map is actually pretty fun. I'm not going to lie. It's because it's one of those rare maps that actually rewards you for spreading out. Because most of the time, that's just a surefire way to get yourself killed. Especially on higher difficulties. Don't get me wrong. If there's some sort of side objective that you want to get, like, let's say there's a treasure room or something like that, sure, send a few guys over that way. Whatever. But for the most part, right from the outset of a map, you have the majority of your troops heading in the same direction most of the time. You know what I mean? But in, in a map like this, that's really not the case because you do have to go everywhere. Eventually. So that's pretty cool. I like this map. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Makes you do things that you wouldn't normally do. Makes you try things that you wouldn't normally have a whole lot of reason to try. And it's so much better than a map like Iago's map, right? Where, sure, there is that hallway on the left, but why would you? <laughs> you know what I mean? This time, not only do you have to eventually, but it's actually... It actually makes sense to do it. Because if you don't, uh, due to the way the treasures are set up, right? Some of the thieves will escape if you're not spreading yourselves out. So that was an interesting way to get you to divide yourself up in a meaningful way, I want to say. Of course, not all the treasure is particularly good, but that shining bow over on the left-hand side is definitely worth picking up, especially if you were gonna use Nina. Let me go, let me go! Nina. Nina, it's over. Now you're gonna get what's coming to you. <sighs> we have wildly differing views on justice. Do your worst, villain! Huh? Huh? I'm not half the villain you think I am. Why not even a tenth? <laughs> I spit on your idea of villainy then. 
And you think you know me. You rarely visited. I made myself into who I am. You shouldn't be surprised that we're different as night and day. So take out your weapon. Do what you must, villain. Stop saying that. Stop saying that. Uh. So just because I threw you off into deep realms to raise yourself makes me a bad guy. Is that what you're trying to say? Ah! <laughs> just do it already. Wait. Wait. This foolishness must end. Come with me, daughter. No. No, never. Listen. Listen. How can you just throw your life away? How can you say that I never had a care for you? Why do you think I hid you in the deep robes? <gasps> because that wasn't worth your time. No. I would have kept you as near as my dearest treasure. I didn't want you to get caught up in the fighting of our time. I wanted you to be safe. My world does terrible things to people. I have endured it all. But if something happened to you, it would have been the end of me. I assume that he's talking about his backstory there a little bit. Because I, from what I understand, Niles has a really tragic past. And that's kind of why he's so messed up. But that's just as I understand it. I haven't personally seen where this is explained. Probably would have done better to uh, make that a little bit clearer there, game. Because as it stands, he just seems kind of like a freak and the sheet's gone loose. You know what I mean? <sighs> I haven't convinced you clearly. I'll let you go free, but only as a member of our party. I wish you hadn't chosen a thief's life, but I can keep you from the worst of it. You want me to join you? I won't abandon my cause. You're clueless about what I'm doing. The man who owns this manor... Do you know how he's gotten all his money? He destroyed families. He swindled women and men of their life savings. One of the people in my group grew up in one such family. We demand justice! And that leaves you and me the only... That leaves you and me only one way out of this. Nina... Nina, please. Father. Father, I'll admit that I may have misjudged you, a little. I consider myself a fair woman, so I'll give you one last chance. If you and your friends look into this vile man's dealings, I'll join your party. Yes. Yes, well, many people misjudge me, but I've done the same to you. I promise to do better, starting now. We'll do what we can here. Are they really not going to make a big <sighs> deal out of the only thing about Nina? <laughs> Because, see, if, if you just looked at her from the perspective of this paralogue, she's like a Robin Hood type character. If you look at her from anything else, she's a Yaoi fan, girl. <laughs> what? I guess this is what I get for not paying closer attention to the, the writing in this game, I suppose. But in fairness, if the game is going to call more attention to the joke than they are to her actual character, then can you blame me for only remembering the joke? Like, honestly? Uh, sorry this all got so damn complicated. Leave it to me to turn a standard manor mission into a family crisis. No. No, don't worry. We've all been there now. Besides, thanks to Nina, we exposed what was going on. She was right as can be about all the evil schemes this man was up to. We should be thanking your daughter. I know dude feels the same. Ah, uh. oh, really? What a relief. I hate airing my dirty laundry in public. Oh. Oh, what are they muttering about? Awfully chummy, those two. The fellow my father is talking to. Not bad, not bad. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, I guess there is a silver lining in being stuck in my father's brigade. Oh, <laughs> are there more fine gents worthy of my attention? You know, ooh, whoa, I just realized she's... Oh, but that's, that's your dad, though. Nina's a freak. <laughs> Maybe a whole smorgasbord of masculine delights. Huh? Huh? Daughter, what is it? Silas believes that you're staring. Do you need something? Nope. Nope, nothing. I'm just fine. You two just carry on. Yes. Yeah, fine. We, uh, we will. Wellity, wellity, wellity. <laughs> <laughs> Silas is quite the appetizer. I hope there are more tasty sights in store. Yum, yum. What? <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. And what a better way to end it than that. Because I just think that that so perfectly summarizes the whole game. You have this whole serious thing with Nina being this Robin Hood type character. That's immediately overshadowed by her love of Yaoi. And I think that that is fates in a nutshell. So, all that said. We've got every last kid that there is to get in Fire Emblem Conquest. And that is going to do it for me. So thank you for coming with me on this wild journey. I hope that you all enjoyed 
It's been a trip, guys, but I will see you on the next one. Like if you do, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Peace.